question for uh, the Board of County Commissioners uh, for, um, what is it today, August 16th? Uh, and let the record reflect that we have all three commissioners present. And uh, the first order of business is open public forum. This is an opportunity where folks in the audience have the opportunity to uh, share any thoughts or concerns with the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we do have a sign up sheet for anybody that uh, wanted to provide testimony but did not sign up. Please ask that you do this so that we make, make a, a, a record of your appearance. I do have uh, five people signed up so far and I will just go through them as, uh, as presented to me. I will uh, um, do my best to pronounce the names accurately. If, if I uh, uh, mess up, please don't be too cruel. Uh, it's not deliberate, it's just I uh, uh, might have had difficulty reading it. So I will start out with uh, Miriam Berkman. And you have three minutes, and the three minutes will be on the screen. So I okay. ask that you try and wrap up in that time period. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. You pronounced my name correctly. Um, not too many people do. Good afternoon, County Commissioners. My name is Miriam Berkman. I am a member of Spoken Alliance through Congregation Emmanuel. I'm here to urge you to match investments from the cities of Spokane and Spokane Valley by allocating at least 4.5 million of the county's ARPA dollars for early learning and childcare. As a psychologist working at Eastern Washington University's Counseling Center for 25 years, I saw how lack of access to consistent caring childcare was a barrier to student success for both students who were parents and for those who grew up in poverty and dysfunction. We can mitigate the subsequent parental and familial distress by supporting easy access to childcare and early learning. We appreciate the response from county staff at last week's meeting. We are absolutely interested in both short-term and long-term solutions to stabilizing early childcare learning and appreciate looking at all possible funding sources. However, ARPA dollars are a critical bridge to stabilize the field right now until long-term solutions take effect. In Washington, new criteria mean that middle-income families will be eligible for working connections in 2025. Your allocation towards early education would create a necessary emergency bridge to get families through the next three years. Since March 2020, over 13 child care centers in Spokane County have closed their doors. That equates to over 1,000 parents who don't have child care to let them return to the workplace. The Washington Department of Commerce concluded that 47% of unemployed parents considered child care a barrier to reemployment. We need ARPA funds to go towards early learning to stabilize our child care system until 2025 when families will be supported with working connections. Be behind me, you can't see a string of 200 postcards, but we'll give them to you later, filled out by your constituents explaining how the child care crisis impacts them. That string is continuing to grow with each day that we fail to take action. Again, we would like to meet with you individually to discuss how to move forward on allocating the ARPA funds towards early childhood education, and we look forward to your response. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so <clears throat> with regard to the postcards, I don't want to lose the flavor of the fact that you have a growing list. So if you wanted to just uh, send us an email with a list of all the folks that have signed on the postcard so that we can enter that into the record, I'd be happy to do that and stuff. So don't want to lose the flavor of what your intent was. It's just that I got those rules on the wall there that I got to abide to too. So uh, the next person I've got signed up is uh, Caitlin Judd.
Hello, my name is Caitlin Judd, and I am a member of Spokane Alliance through Parkview Early Learning Center as Center Director. I am here to urge you to match the investments from the city and valley by allocating $4.5 million of the county's ARPA dollars for early learning and childcare. Investing in ch the childcare industry is important to me and because we serve an area of high percentage of families accessing food stamps and state subsidy who need support in multiple ways. We have supported parents through times of not being able to buy diapers, formula, to help with transportation, and off offering housing assistance. Parkview is more than just a child care facility. We have, we are our family support and cheerleaders for big and small victories. Whether it is getting a car, starting college, or getting a job, our parents come to us excited to share the news. Every day is a new day, providing new opportunities and experiences for our kids and our families. We would be able to hire more staff to give our classrooms smaller ratios to encourage better educational teaching times, field trips, and creative projects. I, we would be able to support our problem, our partners, Northeast Family or Youth Family Services, to stock our community clothing and hygiene closets. We would be able to bring in more site resources, including occupational therapy, mental health resources for children, staff, parents, and as well as speech therapy. We could offer multiple trainings for our staff to meet the individual and group needs for our students. These trainings would help trauma-informed care, diversity, equity, and inclusiveness placed within our classrooms. We are this is why we are urging you, the experts, the, pro the providers, families, and communities directly impacted by our child care crisis to find a short-term and long-term solutions. Specifically, we, n we need affordability for our families, our workforce support, and behavioral health resources for our kids and our staff. We would like to reach out to meet with you individually to discuss how to move forward to allocate the ARBA funds towards early childhood education. Thank you. Thank you. The next person I have signed up is uh, Nathaniel Lohman. Good afternoon. My name is Nathaniel Lohman, and I am a first-year medical student at the UW-Gonzaga Partnership. I'm also a father to a three-year-old son with some special developmental and emotional needs stemming from a congenital uh, chromosomal deletion syndrome. After working for the U.S. government the last seven years in the embassy in Mozambique, my wife and I decided to come to Spokane specifically um, because we were attracted by the training opportunities that were available to us here. It was also the case that um, hope for more accessible, more affordable, and uh, better quality childcare would be um, easier to find here than in other alternatives like Seattle. With the heavy course loads that my wife and I hold, while studying medicine and my wife studying uh, speech and language science at Eastern, high quality childcare is the linchpin in our ability to train and eventually serve the Spokane community. Nonetheless, childcare currently costs us more than $1,200 a month and we are unable to access the Working Connections uh, program because we are seeking higher education and ineligible for that. Given that we have just a single child, we know that many families are more impacted than we are, yet we feel stretched. I urge you to prioritize financial support for affordable, available, and high quality child care in Spokane. These investments will affect and attract talented individuals with children to train in the health sciences that the county and the city have invested so heavily in and those individuals will have a higher likelihood of serving the Spokane community in the future. I urge you to support child care as generously as you can. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, my next uh, speaker is uh, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Tamar Molino. You did a good job on the name, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to address you today. My name is Tamar Molino. I'm the rabbi of Congregation Emmanuel, a reformed Jewish community in Spokane and member of the Spokane Alliance. 
I'm also the mother of two sets of twins who are now age 13 and 16. I am so grateful that my children had access to high quality preschool when they were that age in Spokane. And as they have grown, I've seen the impact that's had on their social development and their ability to learn. As a parent and as a rabbi, I've also seen the tremendous impact the COVID-19 pandemic has had on the social, emotional, and educational lives of our children. Children are educationally delayed. Their socializing muscles have severely atrophied in many ways and are in dire need of exercise. In the case of some preschool age children have not been developed at all. Mental health needs in children have skyrocketed since the beginning of the pandemic. We also know from sustained research how much a preschool education affects individuals' abilities to be successful in their lives in the future. They are less likely to abuse substances or be incarcerated and more likely to graduate high school and become productive members of society. Allocating funds to this endeavor is an investment in the life of Spokane County that will have an incredibly high rate of return. I wanna share a couple teachings from Jewish tradition that I think bear relevance to the issue and also I believe express universal values. In Jewish law, we teach that if you don't teach a child a trade, you're teaching him or her to steal. We as a society bear the responsibility for equipping our children for life and access to, early, to quality early childhood education and mental health care are essential ways to fulfill that responsibility. In addition, in the Talmud, in one of our sacred texts, we read, the world is sustained only through the breath of young school children. We sustained our Spokane County community through helping our youngest, most innocent members thrive and grow. Please consider allocating ARPA funds to give our county's children what they need and deserve. Thank you. Thank you. So my last uh, uh, individual that has signed up, um, uh, I'll, I'll call to the microphone again if there's anybody else in the audience that would like to uh, provide any testimony please feel free to uh, uh, pick up one of these from my clerk and we will give you the opportunity to share your thoughts with the board uh, but the last one I have signed up is uh, Judy Silverstein Thank you, commissioners, for letting us speak today. Um, I didn't prepare anything, um, but I agree with everything everybody said. And um, I just want to say that, in general, supporting childhood and investing in that, in that now and early uh, education uh, is a benefit to society in the short run and the long run. Um, it's econo an economic benefit. It uh, will help the parents of younger kids go to school or get a job especially in the larger families where the mothers or whoever whoever's the main child caregiver will stay home for longer out of the workforce. It's also a benefit to the kids because um, it gives the younger kids the stimulation as well as the regular nutritional needs that a learning child needs to grow in their brain and their body both. It gives them that and the stimulation that they might not get at home, especially in the larger families where uh, uh, the caregiver there is very busy with a lot of kids. So in general, it's just a good investment, uh, again, and with a good payback, I believe, for both the parents and the children. In the short term, when the parents go to school or get a job, and in the long term, when the children enter school already set to learn, uh, and et cetera. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. If you're not completed with the form, that's fine. Just uh, go ahead and come to the microphone, sir, and share your thoughts with us. And if you could uh, give us your name and address, that would be great. Yeah, so I, I, hopefully I won't take long. My name is Luke Jasmine III, and um, I live in Spokane in the Chief Gary neighborhood. Um, I, I wanted to come up here because um, I, I want to give credit where it's due. So uh, you stepped up before. You stepped up when we, when we came to you and asked for uh, CARES funding uh, to be able to make sure that we're, we're caring for uh, our kids and, and we have spaces for our families. And uh, if it wasn't for that, Parkview, we wouldn't be open. And we serve over 100 families in just that one location. Um, 
like many said before, there are long-term solutions that we're working on federally and statewide that will be kicking in for families and in the workforce in 2025. And, and we're just asking you to step up again and, and be there. Uh, families are hurting right now. Uh, we want to be able to provide the care for our, our families. We, when, when you allocated the CARES funding, that went to over 400 families in this community. And uh, it helped them cont continue going to work. Uh, and it helped us be able to have teachers that can be there and, and serve in a, in a consistent way. So uh, we want those families to work. We want those families to have the safe and consistent environments. Uh, but, but we need you, again, like I said, to step up again um, and, and help us here with uh, a $4.5 million allocation um, so that we, we can get to that, um, to that next step, okay? So that's all. I just want to step, give, give credit where it's due and, and ask again if you can, can do that for us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so that completes the list uh, before me. Uh, so I'll ask, is there anybody else in the audience like provide any testimony to the board? Do we have anybody online that would like to provide a testimony? Second call for anybody? Third and final call. So uh, thank you very much for, for coming down and sharing um, your, your thoughts and concerns with us. It is appreciated. And uh, um, I, uh, I think I mentioned last week, and I'll, I'll say it again this week, uh, we've not said no to the request. It is part of the mix. And so uh, it's part of the conversation. But it's not just ARPA funds. I think we've also already found two other sources of funding uh, that uh, can go to the child care industry and, and we are continuing to scour um, uh, uh, different opportunities to try and find funding and stuff. So uh, I don't want you to feel like your uh, request is not being heard or not being considered. Um, we're just trying to find the best path forward that will maximize the amount of money that's available to us from a variety of different sources and stuff. So uh, I'll share that with you and then uh, look to my fellow commissioners for any additional thoughts that you might have. Uh, Commissioner Cooney, I know that you're traveling, but any thoughts you'd like to share with us? I think we lost her. The challenge of driving and Zooming and Commissioner Kearns? I'll just th thank, I'd like to thank everybody for coming down and participating and uh, taking a part in the process. Yep, yeah, so the, um, ah, Commissioner Cooney, do you have any sh thoughts you want to share? And we don't have audio. Could you be, there, you be, there you go. There you go. Okay, so I, I apologize. We're, we're driving up north over in uh, the west side, so this coverage is a little spotty. Uh, but I do appreciate everyone's comments, and we are considering those and figuring out how we uh, look to fund that. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner Cooney. Echo, echo, echo. If anybody accuses us of being in an echo chamber, maybe we are. Uh, so, anyway, with that, thank you very much. We will now move on to uh, uh, the uh, consent agenda. Uh, we have uh, printed up consent agenda with items. 2A through 2R. Uh, we are striking uh, 2H, which is a ward uh, project to Inland Asphalt Company. There's still some paperwork to be completed with that. So we are striking 2H. And um, so with that, then, uh, Chair is open to a motion. Move to approve item two and all sub items excluding 2H on today's uh, 2 p.m. consent agenda. I will second that. I've got a I've motion, got a motion and a second to approve uh, the consent agenda items 2A through 2R excluding 2H. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. 
All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 I got four ayes. Uh, so, <laughs> so with that, then we do not have any public hearing item, and uh, any uh, thoughts or comments from you, Commissioner Cooney? Uh, no, and you can use my stamp today. I appreciate that. That was where I was going next. Thank you for beating me to the punch. Thank you. And Commissioner Kearns. All right. Thank you. And for the record, uh, we also did not have any uh, written comment, uh, either via email or via mail, uh, submitted. So with that, then, we have a clean record. Uh, we are not uh, going to have an executive session this afternoon. So this completes all the business coming before the Board of County Commissioners, and we are adjourned. Thank you.